Thank you again. Uh, as Isabella said, uh, I'm a radiologist uh, and uh, I work in the Young University, <laughs> Medicine University of uh, Verona. Uh, we are really involved in uh, radiomics in research and uh, particularly for uh, what uh, uh, is about uh, hepatobiliar pancreatic uh, uh, imaging. Uh, I will give you an overview of uh, radiomics uh, and uh, their uh, uh, its applications to oncologic imaging. First of all, uh, what is radiomics? Radiomics is a, a field of radiological research that provides uh, detailed, multidimensional, and objective uh, characterization of uh, uh, biological tissues by starting from uh, biomedical images. Uh, these contain numerical information on the distribution and the interrelations uh, uh, between uh, the pixels that compose uh, uh, radiological uh, images, uh, and uh, sorry, and uh, uh, we can extract these uh, characteristics, uh, which are called features, and uh, we can correlate them with the pathological and clinical data. The conventional approach to uh, diagnostic imaging uh, begins with a clinical request whose answer is uh, based on the human evaluation and interpretation of uh, images and clinical data. But in the age of the precision medicine, uh, the clinical need of understanding uh, uh, which is the most appropriate uh, uh, treatment uh, for the patient uh, um, overlaps to the diagnostic uh, request. So uh, we need uh, radiomics, we need data mining, uh, to provide an advanced diagnosis, a prognostic stratification, and a personalized treatment. This is the radiomic workflow. The radiomic workflow uh, is uh, characterized by several distinct phases, and each one of them has its uh, implications and weaknesses, as we will see later. We start with image acquisition, uh, which must be standardized and performed with uh, high-hand scanners. Then we must perform lesion segmentation, uh, which can be manual or uh, uh, an automatic process. And then we extract the features. Uh, and of course, these features must be uh, selected upon their uh, reproducibility and statistical power. Then the features are integrated with pathological and clinical data uh, to build databases. Uh, and the final process is data mining to provide a personalized approach to the patient. Of course, tumor heterogeneity uh, is a, a key feature for oncological imaging. We know that tumors are highly heterogeneous on the genomic, pathological, and phenotypical levels. And the underlying hypothesis is that radiomics uh, can explore tumor microenvironment as well as heterogeneity. Um, through the extraction and description of radiomic features. And this proved to have several important implications for the evaluation of uh, tumor biology, aggressiveness, uh, genomics, uh, response to treatments, and prognosis. Uh, research interest uh, has been unbroken over the last years as uh, thousands of studies have been published uh, discussing uh, the applications of radiomics uh, in various settings. We're coming close to a decade of research in radiomics uh, and is uh, necessary to have a look at what results have been achieved. And in particular, uh, although radiomics is a promising approach to analyze uh, uh, medical image data, uh, it has many pitfalls regarding especially reproducibility. And moreover, there is a, a translational gap in radiomic research with uh, so many studies being published, but so far little or no translation into clinical practice. And finally, there is the need for meta-analysis and systematic reviews to define uh, the real level of evidence of uh, radiomic research. Uh, this is a very important aspect because uh, in this image you can see which is the uh, the workflow and the streamline of radiomics and uh, the radiomic quality score was designed to improve uh, the scientific quality of radiomic studies and this score assesses uh, several characteristics uh, and uh, of uh, a radiomic study 
and it's composed by 16 criteria uh, with a score of uh, 36 indicating a superlative study qualities. Uh, but as I said before, uh, things are not so easy as radiomics is a complex, uh, a multi-step process uh, and uh, each step uh, has uh, methodological challenges to overcome uh, to ensure the robustness of the model and the reproducibility of the model. And the recent study uh, reported a median uh, uh, radiomic uh, quality score of 21% among 44 systematic reviews. So uh, this suggests that the quality in this uh, research field must be increased as is, uh, it is currently unsatisfactory independently of uh, the study topic. As I said before, radiomics uh, has uh, different potential applications in oncological imaging, uh, screening and diagnosis, uh, improved staging, uh, uh, evaluation of response to treatment and prognosis stratification. If we see to the graph on the bottom, you can see that the medium uh, radiology, uh, radiomics quality score is very low independently to the target. So we can start with the screening. Uh, uh, of course, we know that uh, uh, screening in uh, uh, lung cancer based on uh, CT uh, identifies a large number of false positives. And in the terminal pulmonary nodules, uh, of which just a fraction will develop into cancer. And because of this limitation, of course, uh, investigators uh, have been developing uh, several radiomic based biomarkers uh, by integrating imaging with uh, genomic molecular cellular biomarkers to improve characterization of nodules and, of course, reduce post positives and over treatment. Uh, these studies and this meta analysis uh, reported encouraging results even though the specificity is, remains uh, unsatisfactory, and most of all, uh, heterogeneity between studies is very high. And another uh, important field in which screening has a, a fundamental role is breast cancer. Uh, mammography screening has a, a very old story. And uh, in mammographic screening, uh, of course, it is critical to have uh, a high accuracy because false positives will lead to unnecessary intervention while, and this is most, more important, false negatives will uh, lead to uh, cancer progression. And because of the long history of mammographic screening, the, the re, there are very large repositories of mammographic uh, images. So they were used to uh, develop a computer-aided diagnostic workstation to aid in the interpretation of mammographic images. But despite the use of a computer-aided uh, diagnostic workstation uh, in clinical practice, uh, the large, this large uh, multicentric uh, study comprising more than 600,000 mammograms concluded that the uh, computer aided diagnosis do, did not improve the diagnostic accuracy of mammography. This may change with the publication of this other study uh, that train and test a convolutional, a convolutional neural network on mammograms uh, uh, to classify mammograms as positive or negative and the AI algorithm outperform sorry, outperform uh, all the radiologists uh, that uh, originally evaluated the mammograms. Nonetheless, the AI system uh, did contain uh, false negatives that were identified as positive by radiologists and vice versa. This complementarity suggests that uh, combining AI with uh, radiology will provide uh, the highest accuracy and likely lead to a better diagnosis. Let's go now to staging. We have a few examples regarding the application of radiomics uh, to staging. Uh, these three uh, meta-analyses showed us encouraging results for the diagnosis of nodal metastasis in the lung, colorectal cancer, and breast cancer. Even though, again, specificity remains low and the heterogeneity is high, let me go for, an, for, for a moment to, to this study. This was published by our group. We um, evaluated whether radiomics of the primary tumor was able to predict the presence of liver metastasis in pancreatic adenocarcinoma. 
more than 2,000 patients, than 200 patients, uh, different stages of disease, uh, we perform a CT text urinalysis and we identified eight variables, including the tumor size and several radiomic features uh, that were significantly different between metastatic and non-metastatic lesions. And the logistic regression model was able to identify metastatic patients with a specificity of 91%. And uh, uh, under, uh, uh, the curve, the rock curve of uh, 85. Uh, response to treatment uh, is crucial in the area of precision medicine. Uh, we have several examples of the application of radiomics for the evaluation of uh, response to treatment, but the results are highly variable. Uh, this meta analysis uh, reported that radiomics could predict the response to immunotherapy in uh, patients with uh, non-small cell lung carcinoma by dividing the patients according to their survival and progression-free survival. And this other example, this other meta-analysis reported that uh, um, uh, machine learning applied to magnetic resonance imaging and in particular deep learning enabled uh, higher accuracy in predicting the pathological response to neoadjuvant therapy in patients with breast cancer compared to machine learning and radiomic features, and of course, to uh, conventional MR parameters. This is another study that we conducted on the esophagus and uh, on uh, esophageal cancer. Uh, we tried to evaluate which changes uh, uh, happens after uh, um, chemoradiotherapy in this patient. And we found several parameters that are modified by new age of chemoradiotherapy that could be used to predict the response to treatment. And the results of this meta-analysis uh, confirm our results because uh, um, these data suggest the potential usefulness of radiomics uh, uh, to uh, um, predict complete pathological response after neogen chemoradiotherapy in esophageal cancer with uh, um, quite high um, sensitivity and specificity and an area under, under the curve of, of uh, 81.3%, even though the um, radiomics uh, quality score is highly variable. Let's go now to the uh, more interesting um, and most ambitious uh, um, application of radiomics, uh, which is a prognosis stratification. Uh, several studies reported promising results regarding the identification of diverse pathological features, the prediction of disease recurrence, and the prediction of survival in cancer patients. For example, in this meta-analysis, uh, 41 studies uh, uh, assessing radiomic tumor analysis in differentiating the breast cancer molecular subtypes were included, and more than 10,000 patients were included. Radiomic analysis uh, was able to differentiate between the different molecular subtypes of breast cancer, both using mammography and MRI. This is uh, another study that we conducted on uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma. We applied texture analysis of CT images to patients with a locally advanced pancreatic carcinoma treated by new agent new uh, chemoradiotherapy. And among patients that underwent surgical resection after downstaging, we found differences in these radiomic feature in terms of recurrence pre survival. And again, other studies on prognostic stratification in pancreatic cancer. We applied, in this case, a histogram analysis to preoperative MR of uh, 100 uh, patients with a resectable ductal adenocarcinoma, and we found that several metrics uh, were able to describe tumor heterogeneity and were able to identify tumors with microscopic and microscopic vascular infiltration, nodal metastasis, and peripancreatic fat invasion. So we can predict some adverse pathological features, but also uh, the overall survival after surgery. This was another study based on uh, MRI. Uh, we correlated the conventional magnetic resonance features and the metrics derived from the histogram analysis of uh, apparent diffusion coefficient maps with the risk and the time to metastasis after resection in patients with resectable ductal adenocarcinoma. 120 patients 
And uh, we found that the ADC skewness, which is a, a representative of tumor heterogeneity, again, had a significant after effect on the risk of metastasis and uh, was also correlated to the time of metastasis. So this uh, parameter may be uh, predictive of uh, worse prognosis after resection. Not only uh, ductal adenocarcinoma, but also pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, in this study, again, we applied uh, histogram analysis to MR uh, images, and uh, we found uh, uh, that uh, several metrics derived from this analysis uh, could be helpful in predicting tumor grade, vascular involvement, nodal and liver metastasis, and in particular, uh, ADC entropy and ADC kurtosis, which are again related to tumor heterogeneity, uh, were the most accurate parameters for the uh, identification of neuroendocrine tumors with a more aggressive uh, biological behavior. Let's move now to the liver. Uh, radiomics model showed uh, a promising prediction performance for uh, the prediction of microvascular invasion in ACC. Uh, 23 studies were included in this meta-analysis, more than 4,000 patients. And as you can see, the uh, radiomics uh, quality score was uh, definitely better than other studies. And the areas under the curve were uh, um, uh, definitely good, both for CT and MRI. Um, of course, we need the improvements in standardization and methodology, but the results are really encouraging. And finally, uh, prognosis stratification in rectal cancer. This meta-analysis included the seven studies, more than 1,000 patients, and the radiomics was able to predict distant recurrence after <laughs> <certain> <laughs> Um, after surgery in rectal cancer patients with a sensitivity and specificity of 76% and 85%. So I'm going to the conclusion. Radiomics is a powerful and promising tool, but we are at the beginning of the, of, of the, of the path. All studies demonstrate is low evidence, poor methodology, and high heterogeneity. So what we need is research, research, and research, because we must improve our findings and translate uh, our findings into clinical practice. Thank you very much.